I started thinking about fashion in late 60s and who, who could really tell that story? This guy. This is um, a true gem of Charlotte and I'm so excited to have Mike Watson here this evening. So everyone, please welcome Mike Watson. All right, thank you. That was nice. Um, can you hear me okay? I talked loud, wow. Um, it's good to see everybody here tonight, and um, one of the things that she pointed out very quickly was that she called it a jungle of an exhibit. I was nicer, I just said it was eclectic. Um, and when she approached me, it was very daunting and kind of overwhelming because it is such a diverse group of artists that are represented in this exhibit. So I was a little bit overwhelmed at first about how am I going to find any kind of continuity or thread to, ha, thread, fashion, thank you, second row. Um, how was I going to find something to bring all that together? And we talked, and although, you know, I'm not going to talk about every single piece, I am going to focus on Picasso's tapestry. If you look down, you can see it hanging on the end of the wall, because there are not a lot of tapestries. And, and uh, it's a nice piece that bridges the gap between art and fashion. And then I'm going to talk um, specifically about uh, Vassarelli's Tritum K, with also referencing his black and white op artwork. But that was like earlier, not specific to 68. But again, just to kind of get you to 1968. So there will be plenty of time at the end if you have any questions, or if something's really just killing you and you can't stand it, just yell it out. It's fine. I'm a teacher also. Doesn't bother me. Um, you can just ask me that question at any time. It's really good to see so many people here. Very eclectic audience as well. I see some students, yay. And then uh, it's really good to see some of the regulars that I've seen here before. And thank you, Beckler, and everybody with that. All right, so let's get started. The reason it's called Aftershock is because in the 60s, there was a youth quake. Early 60s was all about swinging London, youth quake, the idea of social, cultural, and political revolution, a lot of things coming together at one time. And so what I wanted to talk about is this idea of this aftershock, the effect from this very youthful young population that all of a sudden was in power. They had the power to change the world. And they did so in many different ways, some of them amazingly positive ways that we still embrace today, other things that maybe we did but we gave up, a little experimentation. Um, but the reason I had the first slide set up this way is that I wanted to show you, by overlapping the two images, how art and fashion are going to come together. So this is a Vassarelli painting that he had done. Um, and this is a perfect example of a 1960s, mid-60s A-line dress, very sheath. And what I love about this image is all the people in the background. That's my favorite part. She's there, kind of doing her thing with her clean mod look. And then there's all these people in the back that are wearing what they're supposed to be wearing for being fashionable at that time. So the 60s was a very definitive time where change was happening. Change was happening in fashion. Change was happening in politics. Change was happening in art. So I love the quote by Buckminster Fuller that says, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. And I think that's a true reflection of the artwork that's here tonight in this exhibit, is because a lot of these artists, and specifically the ones I'm gonna focus on, Picasso and Vassarelli, were not about just taking on what was supposedly the art medium or the art thought process at that time. They were all about creating their own place, their own work, their own imagined world. All right, Picasso. I purposely chose this because it's a tapestry and because it's not like designers took an exact Picasso and just printed it on, on their dress. This, what I'm going to talk about, is the psychological kind of imprint that Picasso had on fashion. Okay? I wanted to start first by pointing out the painting from 1930, because the tapestry is 1968, but the painting was 1930. There was a series of drawings slash paintings that he did, the swimmer and, and some dancers and the female acrobat and this one, that were all kind of like these reductionist pieces of artwork where I'm going to remove every possible 
detail, characteristic, anything I can find to get to what the human form really is. And I'm going to make sure it encompasses the entire framework. Because it's this idea of creating something that is a living piece of art that looks like it's always moving. As a matter of fact, what's cool about like these paintings and some other ones that he has done, and Vassarelli, as a matter of fact, is that you can rotate them and hang them differently, and they still are OK. Try it at home. Confuse your husband or wife when they come home and their painting's upside down. Um, but for here, it was intentional. And so a lot of the inspiration behind this painting of the acrobat was this idea of Picasso trying to work out on canvas self-expression and self-discovery. Who am I in this world? How do I exist in this world? I, I am shaped by the chaos of the history of this world, and yet I need to figure out who I am. That was, that was a lot of what he did and why he did a lot of really interesting different things. Sculpture, paintings, you know, different materials, very experimental. Okay? Deconstruction of the body, absolutely. That's not a real body, in case you didn't know. But, um, but trying to get it down to its most basic elements. And again, this idea of a living art. Now, the, the piece on the bottom, I know it's a little hard to see, but it was basically the only image I could get. It's a picture of the Book of the Day and Book of the Night in the um, temple of Harthra in Egypt. And Picasso loved Egyptian artwork and was highly influenced and inspired by the artwork in Egypt. And what's really interesting about this is this is one body. Here are the legs, the torso, and the head, and the arms. And then here's the reverse. And it creates this kind of human bridge under which people are sheltered and living and a visual narrative is being explained. And so there's this idea of a living art where art can tell a story without having to have words. And that was important to him. And you can see where this extension of the limbs, this kind of really elongation of the body, you could see why that would be a possible influence for Picasso. All right, so the other part of this is I want to give you a little background on tapestry because the piece is a tapestry piece. Okay, so on the top, the first two images that showed up on the top were of Madame Durbach, who is the atelier in France that did many of Picasso's tapestries, but a lot of other modern artists as well. He wasn't the only one. So the Rudy Gernreich piece right here has a lot of similarity from back when Picasso was painting these ideas of the circus. Now, the other part about Rudy Gernreich is he loved to show kind of this idea of physical manifestation of psychic energy, this idea that our bodies represent and replicate what's in our mind. And we do this in a, very, a variety of ways. So clearly, he also invented the all-encompassing thong. Now, what's really nice, and I'll show you here in a second, is he also did a men's thong. Not so popular. But um, this idea of having physical energy and being athletic and, this, and these forms that kind of intersect and start to come together, these are all direct applications of what Picasso did with the, with the acrobat piece. Here's another uh, Peggy Moffat which was one of the models in, in 1968 that was very popular with Rudy Gernreich and showing off one of the bikinis. So his idea was, why well, have a mono bathing suit, a one piece? I'll just take my scissors to it, make a bikini, made millions. All right. But if you look at the haircut and the makeup and the way the arms are, again, very representational of the Picasso painting. Okay? Same types of forms, all that good stuff. The other thing that they share is this idea that power is the drive of everything living to realize itself, meaning that societal pressure and, and power, economic pressure and power, personal pressure and power. When you have to be confronted or engaged with those things, you learn about who you are. This last one has nothing to do with 1968, but has everything to do with showing you the evolution of how art and fashion have merged together even farther how the idea 
of being an artist and being a designer are now oftentimes one in the same. So this is a piece by John Baldessari, and the, where it's located, where this is installed, is in the Prada Foundation. Now, Mucha Prada, the Prada family, is very famous in the fashion world, big players in fashion. Um, my wife had to have a Prada bag. I'm sure they needed the money. Um, but anyway, so Mucha Prada does these very iconic, clean, muted color palettes, beautifully traditional, highly tailored, constructed garments, but then also is a huge believer in the arts, postmodern art, modern art, and the development of artists. She creates foundations like this that have stationary locations where artists can present, but she also has pieces and actual entire buildings that are mobile and travel around the world. And so this piece by Baldessari is called the Giacometti Variations because Baldessari believed very firmly in the idea that everything ends in excess. And that's an exact theory of fashion. One of the main tenets of fashion is that everything ends in excess. You got a short skirt, let's get it shorter. It's not short enough, okay, now I can't sit down, probably too short. Okay, now let's go the other way. Longer, 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 longer. Okay, now I'm dragging the floor. You know, how wide should I make those pants? Remember when you had big bell-bottom pants? And then now how n narrow and tight are they now? So this idea that you push things to an extreme is very much what Baldessari accepted and very much what designers and artists believe in. This also reminded me of, if you're familiar with Degas' ballerina sculptures and how he used real tutus on the sculptures. So again, that cross-collaboration, that merging together. So these reverberations that started in the 60s have taken hold and have huge power in today's, today's world. And it, the faster the world goes, and now it's 24-7, and it never sleeps, and you have access to everything, and it's always changing, the more you're going to see a multitude of individuals coming together to create at the same time. Thank you. All right. So is there any questions?